Hi everyone, it's Charlene with Tranquil Tuesdays, and today I want to talk about tea and ancient traditions and times of crisis. <laughs> um, for today's more philosophical, poetic moment, I even added some um, makeshift ikebana <laughs> that Tony found in the park across the street from us. Um, so when I started Tranquil Tuesdays 10 years ago, one of the two of the reasons I started it was to help showcase China's finest teas and to help people discover one of China's um, most celebrated ancient traditions. And it's the ancient part that I've really been thinking about a lot in the last, I guess, 48 days. <laughs> um, you know, as I've been stuck at home, like many people, I have been finding, been finding a lot of comfort to drinking tea. And I've also thought a lot about how, you know, being, surviving this pandemic has made me feel connected to some, like, you know, the ancient plagues and pandemics we read about in history. And I know a lot of people are reading, you know, old 16th century accounts of surviving different plagues. And so, I started thinking there must be some Chinese, ancient Chinese poems or literature or paintings about finding comfort in tea during a time of crisis. So I definitely needed to enlist some specialty help for that because trying to Google that in English is sort of like an impossible idea. So I contacted two Asian art historians um, that I'm friends with. Professor Christine Ho and Professor Brita Merck. Thank you to both of them for helping me out, put me, pointing me in some the right directions. And they gave me a lot of great resources, which is the basis for the long blog post I wrote, which is linked below on this topic. But they also both mentioned a poem, a very famous poem called Seven Bowls of Tea. And it is a poem that's written in the 8th century by Lu Tong in the Tang Dynasty. And it's a, probably the most famous Chinese tea poem. It's the poem you would see like excerpted, excerpted in any book about Chinese tea. It'd be like on the wall at a tea house. I mean, it's that, it's that kind of poem. Um, so everyone's pretty much seen it, but the chance to read it again during this moment really helped me discover new things about it. So I'm just going to read two lines from it. Um, I hope it's not too cringy for you to watch me read poetry, <laughs> but I'm definitely not going to read it in Chinese. Um, and then real quick, I wanted to say something about, well, the setup and the seven cups. So these are my seven cups, everybody. Um, this is actually a tea set that I love from this artist in Jingdezhen, the person in the making capital of China, and she made this whole tea set with a tea pot and each cup is a different stroke in the character the chinese character for tea it's really great and so it's a deconstructed character for cha anyways so those, those are five this is my sixth cup and my seventh cup um the gaiwan is actually a great illustration of the word bowl in the title for seven bowls of tea um it's sometimes the the poem is sometimes translated as seven cups of tea. And that's because the word, the Chinese word character used there is Wan. And that Wan is the same one in Gaiwan. And if you remember in the video I did way back of how to use a Gaiwan, this is the guy, the lid, and the cup part is the Wan, which I'm translating as cup, but you could also translate as bowl. So when I say seven bowls of tea, that's the word I'm talking about. Anyways, okay, so I'm gonna read two lines from this poem. And one thing I learned in my research of this poem is, this poem's actually an excerpt. It's actually a, a, a small poem within a lar longer poem. That's frequently not mentioned, but anyways, that's, that's advanced knowledge of this poem. Um, okay, so the first line is, oh, sorry, one more thing before I read this poem. <laughs> so this idea of drinking seven cups of tea is this concept I've been mentioning frequently in many videos, but which went into a little more depth in the last video about unscented, unblended, pure natural teas, about this idea of drinking multiple steepings of the same tea 
in like succession. And so this idea of seven cups of tea is drinking seven steepings of one tea. Okay, so that's what the format of this poem. So the first, so I'm gonna start now, I'm actually gonna read it. Um, the first line is, one bowl moistens the lip and throat, two bowls shatters loneliness and melancholy. And that second line really stood out to me in reading it in this moment, because I feel loneliness is something that everyone is thinking about as we're very isolated socially and um, social distanced. And of course, melancholy is a general, you know, mood that's pervading everywhere as the pandemic rages. So that just really stood out to me this time and to think that, you know, someone in the ninth century was also drinking tea and thinking of loneliness and using tea as a way to find comfort from loneliness really struck me. So. There are more lines of this poem, because like I said, it's seven bowls. So, you know, I did the first two, then he, third bowl, and he keeps on going. But I'm just going to focus on the second bowl, since I felt that was the most relevant at this moment. Um, and so I really wanted to dig deeper on that second line, two bowls shatters loneliness and melancholy. So I tried to look up some different translations for this, because as I said, this was written in the ninth century in the Tang Dynasty. So this is like classical ancient Chinese. And... Translating that into contemporary Chinese is, you know, already an academic achievement, but then to translate into English, you know, is a whole other level. So I wanted to read two other translations of this one line. So again, I'm just translating the second line of this poem. I don't translating. I'm reading other people's translations. Okay, here's another translation of that one line. The second shatters the wall of my loneliness. And then the third translation that I found, which is again, the third translation of this poem of someone drinking the second cup of tea out of seven, is from this wonderful resource called Theosophy. I'm gonna link that below. And that's written by uh, someone named Stephen O. Young, who is a translator of Asian culture with a specialty in history, literature, and art in China, and with a huge passion in tea. So his website is completely devoted to translating ancient Chinese poems and literature related to tea. I mean, it's like exactly the perfect resource for what I'm trying, what I was trying to look for. And I reached out to Mr. Ouyang, who was so gracious and said, I, he welcomed me to share his work and translations on this video. So thank you very much, Mr. Ouyang. So his translation of this second line in the Song of Seven Cups is, the second bowl banishes my loneliness and melancholy. So, you know, I just really wanted to spend a moment focusing on this poem, the idea of finding comfort in tea in ancient China and ancient traditions and how that relates to our contemporary moment. And I really found it fascinating to look at this poem this really popular, well-known poem and see this line that felt so incredibly resonant to this moment. So if you want to learn more about the poem and about ancient Chinese poems and literature related to tea, there's plenty of links below. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a lot more wonky and kind of br more brainy than most videos. I'll get back to making tea in the next video, but I just thought it'd be nice to spend a moment to focus on this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next week.